Thank you.
get my blessing. It is my time and it is my season. And I'm going to get it. I'm going to get what God has for me. It's my time to reap what I have sown. Hallelujah. Go get your blessing. How many of you believe that God's word is true? And everything that he promised us, we can have it. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen. I haven't been perfect. But I've sure been faithful. You see, God has a purpose. And I know he's able. I've got a seed in the ground. I know I'm not the only one. And it's blessing, no more stressing. I've got a seed in the ground. And it's flowing, now I'm showing. This is my seed for grace. Let's sing it. This is my for grace, for favor. This is my to reap what I have. Oh, I said I haven't been, I haven't been perfect, but God knows. I've tried to be faithful I know God has a purpose for me and for you and I know he's able I've got a seed in the ground and it's blessing no more stressing I've got a seed in the ground and it's flowing For grace, for yeah, 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 yeah. To reap what I sow. Come on, sing it like you mean it. This is mine for God's grace and His favor. Believe it. I'm gonna reap what I have sown. Listen, everything is working together for my good, according to Romans 8:28. Everything is working together for my good.
he's working it out for you and it's gonna turn over in your favor yay but the word of God declares that many are the afflictions of the righteous and it doesn't stop that says, but the Lord delivered him out of them all so whatever it is you're going through right now you gotta really believe and trust God and confess with your mouth say it's working for my good it's working for my that God is working things out in your favor. Can y'all lean with us this morning? God is leaning in my direction. Come on, I need to hear everybody say it. Come on, say it. He's leaning. Y'all got to put a little lean on it. In my direction. Somebody's got to make a decision for me. God is leaning. He's leaning. He's making sure that I get the yes. In my, direction. in my direction somebody owes me some money they're trying to figure out whether or not they're going to pay me back he's leaning and God is turning it around and leaning in my direction yeah yeah he's leaning yeah he's leaning. Whoa. Come on, we're going to say that again. This is my season. Yeah. This is my season. Oh, oh, this is my season. Do you really believe it this morning? Come on and say, this is my season. This is my season. This is my This is my I'm going to praise them in this I'm going to trust them in this I'm going to worship in this This is my This is my For grace For favor Oh yes it is This is my Oh I'm going to reap To reap what I but I want you to look at a word with me this morning as we talk about resilience resilience the key is the key to your destiny resilience resilience y'all gonna pray with me this morning amen resilience now I want to examine this major key that leads you to your destiny uh, you do understand that the greater the calling on your life the greater the attacks The attacks in this life are not designed just to hurt you a little bit, but really, ultimately, they're designed and intended to destroy you. Nothing that the devil does is just to make you say, ouch. When he comes against you, he comes against you to bring ultimate destruction. Satan, when he comes, he plays for keeps. In 1 Peter 5 
And verses 8 through 9 says, Stay alert, <clears throat> watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. Satan is looking for someone. He's looking high and low for someone to devour. A believer, someone that believes God. He's not after everybody. He's, off, he's often uh, not just t dealing with just anybody, but he's after the believer. Whether you know it or not, he knows he cannot uh, destroy you. But if he can make you feel fear and doubt and discouragement and divisions, he'll make you feel defeated and destroyed. Anybody here ever felt like that before? After an onslaught of different types of things coming against you, you felt like you were ultimately destroyed. I come to pronounce to you today that it's not over yet. The attack is not physical, but when Satan attacks, he does it in the arena of your mind. He doesn't attack your hands. He doesn't attack your feet, your arms, or your legs. He doesn't attack your body as much as he goes straight to the place that controls your thinking. He knows as a man think it in his heart, so is he. Now what you don't understand is Satan has already studied you. He's, he knows your past pains. He knows your insecurities. He knows your emotional triggers. He knows your failures. He knows what he needs to say to you to get you off your game. He comes with an arsenal of assigned negative words, people that come to verbally assassinate you. He knows what will take you out of your game. So today when he comes, he knows what will get you to feel like quitting. So he doesn't have anything new when he comes. He comes with a cycle of attacks and attackers. He, he does not come with a different set of people. No, 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 no. He doesn't come with a different kind of attack. When he comes, he comes with the same attack, the same demons. Possibly you've been fighting all your life. I oh, wish somebody would pray with me here this morning. Now somebody, you're not understanding this, but the demon that you fight today is possibly the one you fought, fought as a child. The one you fought as a teenager. He illuminated himself even greater when you start operating in your calling. When you start moving in your purpose. Then the devil starts saying, let me tell you what, let's launch an even greater attack. But there's nothing new under the sun. The same devil that attacked you then is the same devil that's attacking you now. He knows how to get to your attention. So today we got to understand, you got to identify the enemy. He says it's the devil the, that comes to devour you. Now sometimes we're looking around and we're looking at people and we're saying people have come to devour us. But you can't put your eyes on people. You got to keep your eyes on the devil. Somebody say, say you got to get on the run this morning. We just found out who you are. We're going to stop fighting people and we're going to start fighting the real enemy. Now in verse 9 he says, now, now don't you ever feel like you're the only one. Believers all over the world are going through the same types of attacks. All you've got to do is go to a brother or a sister and they'll tell you the same thing that you're going through is something that I'm going through. Now, either I'm going through it or I just got through dealing with it. Either I'm going through it or I just came out of it. So by now, I should have a testimony for somebody to tell them the same God that brought me through. 
is the same God that will bring you through. Can I get a witness in this place here today? It's not, it's not a different type of enemy. It's not a different type of enemy that's coming after you. It's the same devil that came after your children that's coming after mine. It's the same devil that's coming after your finances that's coming after mine. It's the same devil that's coming after your family that's coming after mine. But if we can stand together and be resilient. Don't quit. Don't quit. Everyone doesn't survive this attack. Some don't make it. And the dividing line between those who win and those who lose is the winning the winners never ever quit. Let me tell you, I was looking at our church the other day and I thought about how Satan is such a devourer, he's such a crafty hunter. He's like a lion that goes after uh, uh, his prey. He looks at a herd and what you don't understand, he's already selected who he's going to attack. He's looking at the whole herd, but he's already made up his mind, I'm going to get that one. And why does he go after that one? Because they're the smallest, they're the slowest, and they're the youngest. See, this is why we got to, as senior believers, get around those who are baby believers. Because they need to be in a herd of protection. The problem is when Satan gets these baby believers off by themselves, he's already scoped them. He's already looked for them. Oh, there that baby go. And they're with the herd. But instead of them staying in the midst of the herd, they get off by themselves. And if you get off by yourself, the devil says, now, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting to pounce on you because I already singled you out. I've been watching you since you joined Destiny. I've been watching you since you gave the Lord your life. I've been watching you since you've been singing on the praise team. I've been watching you since you've been serving as a greeter. I've been watching you since you've been a deacon. But you're not growing. See, you're not growing. And the only way you can grow is stay in the midst of the herd because there's protection in the midst of the herd. If the slowest, the smallest, and the weakest can get in the midst of those who are strong, they can be resilient. I'm going to preach it anyway. Listen, Galatians 6 and 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Stop somebody high five and say, Don't give up. Don't give up. Some of y'all got to surrender on your face this morning. Some of you have already given over to the devil. Tell him, I'm not giving up. I've come too far already to turn around. Somebody put it in your mouth now. Make a declaration. I've already sacrificed enough to not turn around. I'm not going to stop here. I got to go on to see what the end is going to be. I don't care who walks away. I don't care what happens right through here. I got to keep on marching because I can't give up. I'm, I'm too close. The difference between those who succeed and those who fail is those that succeed just have made a determination never give up. Never give up. Someone say it with me, never give up. That's why you're still here. That's why you're still alive. Satan's even threatened some of you with life-threatening diseases. Some of you have been right at the point of death. I know last year I laid on the floor and died, but I bounced back again. So, in the year before that, Satan had me in an accident rolling over in a vehicle three times. But look at me, I'm still here. Cause I'm not going to let the devil take me out of here until it's time for me to get out of here. And if, if I can survive death twice, if I can go through the valley of the shadow of death, what about this little attack right here that's going to make me quit? I'm going to keep on marching and never give up. 
Come on, baby. Come on. Give me something. To, give me something hotter than that. Amen. Listen. Th- see, see, those who have made up your mind, you got to continue even in pain. If you stop because you got a little pain, ooh, out, and Satan knows that what stops you. I'm looking at some of you this morning. Your praise is predicated on somebody else's dilemma. Don't let what I'm going through stop you from giving God glory. You looking all sad like you at my funeral? No, no, no. You at my birthday party. You no, no. This ain't my funeral. This is my birthday party. Every day I get up, I have another day that I can say, "This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice." Oh, shucks, I think I'm going to preach it in the morning. And be glad in it. You got to continue. Now listen, some people assume that believers shouldn't have any challenges. They just got it in mind, man. Why in the world are you going through that? I mean, you're a believer, right? You're the man of God. You show me one man of God in the Bible that didn't go through anything. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them out of them all. Listen, in James chapter 1 and verse 2 it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. This is an opportunity. Every crisis is an opportunity. Y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Every crisis is an opportunity. It's time for you to show who you really, what uh, you're really made of. Now look at someone say, I was built for this hour. I was built for this moment. Man, no, 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 no. You don't understand what I've already been through. Some of y'all don't understand. See, you look at your neighbor and say, well, you don't look like what you've been through. But that's okay. You, you don't know my testimony. So you, that's why you can't understand my praise. You think my praise is me being arrogant. I'm not being arrogant. I'm just telling you, I know the God I serve. I'm not being cocky. And I'm not boastful. I boast in him. And I tell you, the same God that did it once, he's able to do it again. So he says, but you know when you were, your, your, your faith was tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. When you're tested, when you go through something, it makes you stronger. I want you to help somebody. They sit here, they don't know it. Look at them and say, I'm here to help you. I got a word for you. What you're dealing with right now. Look at them and say, what you're dealing with right now didn't come to make you bitter it came to make you better so let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed you will be perfect and complete needing nothing now what is this key in difficult moments it's called resilience Let's define resilience again. It is the capacity to recover quickly. You know, I discovered, I discovered folk just don't like to see you recover. They want you to walk around with your head hung down. Woe is me. Everybody's a villain, and I'm the victim. But when you walk in with your head up, I thought you were going through something. Yes, I am. And the opposite word is, I'm going through it. I'm not going to park here. Y- y'all not praying with me. Can, can y'all pray with me? I'm not going to park here. I'm going to keep it moving. Look at someone say, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Mm. 
<laughs> Resilience is the ability to bounce back. Now, the Bible is full of examples of people who bounce back after a fall. As a matter of fact, I believe this church is full of folk who's, who's already fallen and bounced back. I got some bounce back kids in here. Got some comeback kids. Where are you? Where are you? I got some comeback. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't see. I don't hear you. Where, where are my comeback kids at? The devil wrote you off, but you. He thought he counted you out, but you you got up and said, "I'm back. I'm back. I'm back." You should have been dead a long time ago. Y'all ain't praising God like you really thought. Like you really bounce back. You say, "I'm bouncing back. I'm bouncing." You made a conscious decision. You didn't, it's not that you didn't fall down or you weren't knocked down, but you made a conscious decision to get back up again. In Proverbs 24 and 16, it says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. A just man fall it seven times and rise it up again. But the wicked shall fall in the mischief. Ain't no getting up for the wicked. But the just. Now, when I always looked at the scripture, I always focus on the rising up. But today, let's look at the falling. It's someone that has been identified as the just. Do you see it? It says, for just man falls. Bishop, are you saying that someone that is just good and godly can fall? I thought that those people who were just don't have fallen moments. I thought that these people, after they've done all the stand, they just stand anyhow. But don't you mistake the stand, the stand came after. Oh. Now, I'm going to need you to shout your way out of this this morning, baby. Look at this, I'm standing today. But every day I ain't standing. <laughs> there are some days I'm falling. But not only does he fall, now look at this. But he falls, the Bible says, seven times, which is a number that completes a cycle. What he's really saying is, just people fall often. Y'all, uh, y'all, uh, I'm about to mess some of y'all up in here. Just people. Uh, you may pretend like you don't say, uh, not me, Bishop. Uh, the very seldom do I fall. But the Bible says, the Bible says, Romans chapter 7, every time I desire to do good, I fall. Yeah, ain't anybody here better than Paul? If Paul could fall, then you know you got struggles with your fall. And you ought to make somebody feel comfortable and say, baby, it ain't all what it looks like. Sometimes I look like I'm not struggling, but there are some days you can't see the fall when I'm laying flat on my back. I'm praising God while I'm laying flat on my back. See, some people, Brother Robinson, some people won't let you in to their life. They keep their falls private and their standing public. Y'all missed that. See, 
no, 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 no. I don't let you see me like that. I'm going to let you see me always in my good space. But see, that's why it's so important for folk to know what you're dealing with sometimes. Because when you come out of it, they'll see your testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of that testimony. Now, Psalm 37, verse 23 through 25. Let me find a, somebody that want to hear a word. Which one of y'all? I just want to find one person. Sometimes I'm going to look over here. People look like, I ain't interested in this. I need to find one person. There you go. Now, I got you, Brother Mike. Okay. In Psalm 37, verse 23 through 25, it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. And most times, we stop right there. The steps of a what kind of man? Someone say it a little bit louder. A what kind of man? They are ordered by the Lord. Somebody say, I'm trying to be good. My steps are ordered. But not only are my steps ordered, but my staggering is ordered. My stumblings are ordered. <laughs> my slips are ordered. My slides are ordered. God says, listen, I know I knew you were gonna fall before you even got here. Now, some of y'all act like it's a big surprise. Oh surprise, man. I can't believe, I can't believe. God says I knew it before you knew it. And see, you, while you're trying to figure what how they got there on the ground, I already knew how they got there. It was already my assignment to get them back off the ground. Look what he says. Though he fall. He shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. Though he fall, who's falling? A good man. Y'all don't believe me, believe the word. A good man, he said, though he falls, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. So what you know that tells me that no matter who's trying to put you down when God is for you nobody can be against you. Look what else he says in verse 25 he says I, I, I've been young and now I'm old yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God takes care of you even after you fall. Do I have a witness in here? And the Bible says that falls are part of life and after you fall, what you do after the fall will determine your outcome. Some people fall and never recover because of guilt and shame. They found somebody to put them, bury them after they fell. Since I got you laying down here, let me go and throw some dirt on you and put you out of your misery. It was said that the, uh, this old donkey uh, fell into a well one day. And um, he fell in there and the owner of the donkey said, well, we can't get him out. We don't have enough rope, enough nothing to get him out. So we'll just bury him. Bury him down in the well. The donkey looked up. And he saw dirt coming down. Oh, they buried me. And every time they threw dirt on him, he shook it off. And stepped up on the dirt. They kept on throwing dirt. He kept on shaking it off. Stepping up on the dirt. Shake it off. Some of y'all need to shake it off. Step up on the dirt. Kept on. The, the owner finally realized that he had thrown so much dirt in there that the, the donkey was climbing out the well now. He was standing on the dirt that he shook off. And when they're throwing dirt on you, shake it off and step up on it. See, the truth is. No one you see walking the day did it without plenty of falls. 
You made it. You you fallen. I I remember this, and let me just do this, and I'm gonna be out in a few minutes. I remember when Glenn Jr. was um, about one years old. Uh, he's 22 now, so I got to look up at him. But I remember looking down. He was one. Do you realize Glenn uh, at the nursery was walking, but wouldn't walk at home? When he got home, he'd do this. But at the nursery, then somebody said, Bishop, a pastor at that time, you know, Glenn's walking. I said, no, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. I said, no, nah, man, Glenn, 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 Glenn got his arms up like this every time. He just sits there with his arms up. He wanted someone to pick him up. We got him home, and um, I noticed, left him in the room by himself, he stood up on the side of the table, picked himself up, and started walking around the table. And he'd fall and get right back up. Fall and get right back up. I realized he was walking, putting one foot in front of the other. Until one day, instead of falling, he mastered walking. Now, there were times as well, I remember when he fell... I was there to pick him up, get him back up, so he could continue walking. Now look at the analogy. Who helps you back up after you fall? Now come on. The truth is, it may not be the same people that you help. But God will send somebody that when you fall to help you be resilient and get back up again. Now resilience begins with an internal determination not to surrender no matter what. It's internal. It's in my spirit. I will not allow myself to be beaten by this we made it by what's on that wall we will not be denied now the truth is getting up may not be your first response to a fall come on you, you know it ain't the first when you fall it ain't the first thing you think about I, I, you know I do my best right now not to fall. And I've seen the commercial. And I don't have one of those devices on a chain. I don't have that. I, I was walking the other day and I was, my foot slid and stopped and I almost stumbled and I grabbed something before I fell because I said, this fall ain't going to be pretty. If I fall now, it's going to be harder to get up sometimes people fall and their first response is I'm having a human moment and now what's the use of getting up again I keep getting knocked down look like it's a regular occurrence in my life look like these falls are scheduled Look like these demons keep coming on a schedule. And then the Holy Spirit speaks to your mind. and He reminds you that all things are working together for your good, that you're called according to his purpose. And get up because what the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn it into good. Now let's be honest. Resilience begins after some thoughts of almost quitting. Yes. Yes. Let's be real. Yes. Have you ever contemplated yes. quitting? Yes. Just yes. cashing in the chips? Yes. Some have even gone as far as to say, I will commit suicide. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But before you do it, Jesus. let me tell you, yes. there's a brighter day yes. on the other side of this.
It's a brighter day. There's something coming after this that's going to make you forget this moment. Now, please understand this. Almost quitting is probably the most irritating thing that Satan experiences because he almost had you there. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to laugh at him. Say, he almost got me. He almost, as a matter of fact, can I tell y'all, he almost got me. And then I had to encourage him. I said, boy, you better shut your crazy mouth up and know who God is in your life. And then I told the devil, almost don't count. Almost only counts in horseshoes. And I ain't playing horseshoes with you. This is my life on the line. Someone said, almost don't count. Almost don't count. <laughs> Man, he almost got me. Almost. Almost, someone say, almost got me. Almost brought me into depression. Oh, yes, he almost made me go back to drinking and smoking and reefer again. But he almost made me go back to the streets and go back to the world. And as I was walking out, uh, something registered on the inside of me. The Holy Ghost leaped in my spirit and said, uh uh, that ain't what you're called to do. Dry your eyes, pick up your spirit. And be the soldier that God called you to be. <laughs> I got a couple more things to take. Now, let me get out of here. Oh boy, let me see if I can jump over some of this. No, no. David says in Psalm 27, he said, I have fainted unless I be believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David almost quit because of his emotions. He had enough of running and running from his enemies. Life can beat you down if you're driven by your emotions. How many of you, how many of you know your emotions, Dr. Clyde? Your emotions can send you off on a tinsy. Yes, yes, but David reached within himself and found something stronger than his feelings. Man, as a matter of fact, you know what? Sometimes you can't go on what you feel. I, I know a lot of people here in here, that's all you talk about. This is the way this made me feel. And this made me feel. And this is what this made me feel like. But baby, if your life is centered around the way you feel, you're locked in a prison of discontent. Because let me tell you something. There are going to be days you're not going to feel like doing nothing. But you got to reach down on the inside of yourself and know who you are and know what God is. Oh, my God. Can I? I focused on my faith. I put my trust in God and not in my heart. Because your heart can fool you. I, mean, I hear people tell me, I don't follow my heart. That's the wrong thing to follow. In Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Most times your feeling doesn't have anything to do with your faith. Resilience is resisting what you feel. Everything in you cries out, I had enough. Then your faith has to give you grace to carry on. Now Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 through 9 it says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not in distress. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. The most times we deal with verses 8 and 9 outside of the scope of his contextual application. Paul explains that the fight in verse 8 and 9 is because of verse number 7. If you wasn't carrying what you're carrying, Satan wouldn't have no right to attack you. What you don't understand is no one robs an empty armored truck. 
When Satan comes after somebody, it's because they're carrying a treasure. Put your hand on your own self. And say, this is what I understand now why the, devil, the devil's been after me. I got a treasure down on the inside of me. A matter of fact, the person next to you don't even know who they're sitting next to. If they knew that you were loaded with grace, if they knew you were loaded with favor, if they knew you were loaded with anointing and blessings, they would value and honor you a lot more. Satan ain't after the truck, he's after the treasure. Look at somebody, I'm carrying something. I'm carrying something. Oh, somebody, you know it, you know it, you know it. Look down on the inside of you and say, man, God, and put something down on the inside of me. And if I can bring it to the destination, it's going to bless somebody. If I can get it to the, and that's all Satan's trying to do, to stop it from getting to its destination. But look what God has done. God says when you really got something valuable that you're transporting, I don't just send the armored truck out by itself, but I get other security vehicles to surround it. Says, look at say, baby, I want to make sure you get to your destination. I want to make sure you get to where God has called you to go. Because what you got on the inside of you, somebody needs it. Somebody needs your word. Somebody needs your song. Somebody needs your anointing. Somebody needs it. So he says, you're carrying more than the norm. Someone said, I got more of me than you know. And I'm going through stuff. What, what is this about? And Holy Spirit said, no, it ain't about you, son. You ain't all of that. It's about what you got on the inside of you. Have you noticed the anointing that's on your life here lately? And say wants to stop that, but I'm going to declare right now, it's still here. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. The Apostle Paul said that trouble is coming from every direction. Yet, I ain't tripping. Uh, that's Glenn's version, I'm sorry. That's, I just paraphrase it. Look at someone say, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. Mm -mm. Cause I know something about God. I know he prepares a table before me in the presence In the presence. I know this. Yeah, I know this. I know the end of the story. At the end of the story, I'm going to win. Now, now, resilient folk can get in a tight spot. That's what distress means. Get in a tight spot. And, and they know that they're not in this spot alone. Now, I, I got to close with this, but I hope it encourages you because I want you to understand something. You're not by yourself. Now, you may be lonely, but you're not alone. What you got to do, and I made a determination on the front end of my battle, was to not be a fool and treat hatred with hate. If you want God to work on your behalf, you got to carry the banner of love. Never let the devil make you bring yourself down to his level. I'm reminded of the three Hebrew boys. They were getting ready to go into a tight spot. The first tight spot was you're getting, trying to get me to worship a God that's fake. A golden image. I can't do that. I can't bow. I can't bow. You'd be surprised of the amount of people that bow and bend 
and break when they should be standing. When they're threatened, they bow. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, stood before the king Nebuchadnezzar and said, O king, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. The God that we serve, he's able. He's able. This is what I stand on, beloved. He's able. Not only is he able, but he will deliver us. But just in case he doesn't, I want you to still know he's able. I wish somebody would just reach over and encourage your quiet, reserved neighbor and tell him he's able. The one that's sitting there looking like you forgot that he's able, he's able. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the king said, I tell you what, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to give you another chance to bow. And if you don't bow this time, I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace. Yes. Yes. And they said, oh, king, we're not going to bow. Yes, we're not going to bow. I don't care what you do. We are not going to bow. So he says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to light up the fire and heat it up seven times hotter. Yes. And when he heated it up, he said, now open the door and throw these boys in. And they closed the door and everybody thought they would burn up. But they came back to check them out. And what they found out is that somebody was in the fire with them. Then they looked again. They found out that there was another one in the fire. Well, beloved, I know you enjoyed that. Now, listen, I hate to cut that off, but I know <laughs> that word has blessed your life today. Now, let's hold on to the word of God. Uh, listen, faith coming by hearing, you may want to play this again and again so you can let it absorb into your life and into your spirit. Share it with somebody. Listen, today, after hearing such a powerful word, you may be ready to make a wonderful decision for Jesus Christ. You can do that by going to the bottom of the screen. If you need to be saved, you need to be connected, or you need to be a part of our daily devotion, all you got to go is to the screen, that number right there, and text in the word save, connect, or daily. Now, salvation is available to you today. It's just as simple. So I said, man, that just sounds too simple to be true, too good to be true. Well, it's really just that simple. Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe. Connecting with us is our privilege. We want you to be a part of our family. So text the word connect and we will join you in, get you connected with this wonderful fellowship. Then thoroughly be a part of our daily devotion as we send your word out to encourage you every day and motivated to live your best life. Last but not least, we are praying every morning at 7.14 a.m. And I'm excited, man, we have been praying constantly and diligently uh, about COVID and other matters. And we've seen the hand of God move. Listen to this. We always pray for results. We're not praying just to be praying. I'm praying to see results. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availing much. We're praying and we're seeing God move in a mighty way. Well, beloved, join us in one of these areas Make that decision because you know that your decisions will determine your destiny. Well, uh, at this time, let's get ready to do something very powerful. Now, this morning, I need you to begin now to worship God in your giving. Worship God. This is a very vital part of worship. Giving unto the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits? What can I give God for all he's been to me? how good he's been to me. What can I pay him? What can I repay him? Well, today, with whatever substance he's blessed you with, make sure you pay your tithes. Give him the top of that of your increase, the tenth of that increase, and watch him return it back to you where you won't even have room enough to receive it. 
and then you want to give the Lord a great offering. And it wouldn't hurt you to bless your bishop every now and then. Just go to one of those sources of giving right there on the screen and make sure that you sow into the kingdom today. Well, as I get ready to leave you champions today, I want you to get this. You're more than a conqueror and you're not fighting for the victory, but you're fighting from your place of victory because the victory is already yours. I love you. I'll see you soon.